Let's go ahead and look at a couple of examples. So, a report from six years ago indicated that the average gross salary for a business analyst was $69,873. Now, since this survey is now outdated, the Bureau of Labor Statistics wishes to test this figure against current salaries to see if the current salaries are statistically different from the old ones. So the $69,873 would be our presumed or assumed population mean that we're going to test against. Now, based on other studies, we're going to assume a sigma of $13,985. Now, for this study, the BLS will take a sample of 112 current salaries. So, we have all the parts we need to set up our hypotheses. We have the hypothesized population mean, we have our sigma, we have our sample size, and of course, once we collect our data, we'll have our sample mean. Now, step one is always establish our hypothesis. Now, we went ahead and did the other step one, which is formulate a good problem. We did that in the previous slide. So actually, in the numbers, we have step one, establish a hypothesis. So remember, our null hypothesis is that the current salary mean is the same as the previous one six years ago. So mu is equal to 69,873. Now, our alternative is the opposite of that, and that is that the current mean salary for business analysts is not $69,873. Now step two, determine the appropriate statistical test and sampling distribution. Now this will be a two-tailed test, because remember salaries could be higher or lower, because we're still in the middle of a global recession, so it's very possible that salaries could have gone down. Now they could have gone up as well, we don't know. So we're just testing whether or not it's equal to. We don't know on which side it may have gone if it's not equal to. Now, since sigma is known, we will be using the Z distribution as we will in all the examples in this video. So we're gonna go ahead and use the formula we had two slides ago. Now, step three, we're gonna specify the type one error rate or the significance level. And again, this is up to us. So I'm going to choose for this one the middle ground and say an alpha of 0 0.05. So I am okay with the possibility of making a type 1 error 5% of the time. Now step 4, we're going to state our decision rule. Now remember, based on the curve, if our Z value is above 1.96, it'll be in our top rejection region, Therefore, we'll reject the null hypothesis. If our Z statistic is less than negative 1.96, then again, we will reject the null hypothesis because that will be in our lower rejection region. Now, of course, step five, we will gather the data. Now, in this case, we went ahead and gathered our data. So our sample size is 112, and our sample mean was 72,100 and 80. So we know that it's higher. But the question is, is it high enough to be statistically significant? Let's go ahead and calculate our test statistics. So our mean salary for the current salaries is $72,180. Our hypothesized mean was $69,873. Now our sigma was given to us at 13,985, and of course our sample size is 112. So again, we have our formula down here at the bottom. So all we do is we go ahead and insert those numbers into our Z formula. So 72,180, which is our sample mean, minus 69,873, which is our hypothesized mean, divided by sigma, divided by the square root of n. And that comes up with a value of z that is equal to 1.75. Now we have a decision to make. So remember our, our hypotheses were mu is 69,873, or the alternative was mu is not 69,873. 
Now we know it's not exactly 69,873 because we found that it was like 71,000 something. But the question is, is it high enough to say that it is statistically different? So our Z was 1.75. And look where that falls in our non-rejection region. It's right there to the left of our critical value. Now, since the test statistic is inside the non-rejection region and not beyond the critical value, we fail to reject the null hypothesis that the old and the current salaries are statistically different. So, we therefore fail to reject the null hypothesis. So we assume that our assumption holds up. Remember, we're not saying that our null is, quote, true. All we're saying is that we could not reject it based on the statistical analysis we did. So, is the salary higher based on our sample? Yes. But can we say it is statistically different? No. And remember, why is that? That's because of the idea of sampling error. Remember, this was just one sample. We could have taken many samples. And those other samples might be right smack in the middle of the non-rejection region. We might have a sample that's lower in the non-rejection region. They could be anywhere in that blue area. We just happened to get one here. Now remember, what we're saying is that 5% of the time, we expect to get a sample mean that's either in the upper rejection region or in the lower rejection region. But this one sample just happens to be located right here, right at the upper edge of the non-rejection region. So we would conclude that the old salaries and the current salary are not statistically different. So example two, Starbucks customer satisfaction. So Starbucks is interested in assessing customer satisfaction in the Canadian city of Toronto, Ontario. To conduct the study, Starbucks asked 225 customers in the city, compared to other coffee houses in Toronto, would you say the customer service at Starbucks is much better than average, which is a score of five, better than average, which is a score of four, average, a score of three, worse than average, a score of two, or much worse than average, a score of one. And this is commonly known as a Likert scale. So five, four, three, two, one in descending order. Now based on the data we collected, the mean rating was determined to be 3.25. And based on previous studies done by the company, it is assumed that sigma is 1.5. So let's go ahead and establish our hypothesis. So our null hypothesis is that the average customer rating is less than or equal to three. Because remember, three is average. In our Likert scale, three is average. And then our alternative hypothesis is that the satisfaction level is higher than three. So we're gonna assume that it's three or less, and then we'll either reject or fail to reject that and then we will go on to our alternative. Because remember, the equal sign, the equality portion, is always in the null. So determine the appropriate statistical test and sampling distribution. Now this will be a one-tailed test. Starbucks is interested in a better than average customer service rating. So you can see that in our alternative hypothesis, we're interested if the, the average customer rating is higher than three. So because of the greater than and less than or equal to than, this will be a one-tailed test. Now since sigma is known, we will again use the Z distribution as we did before. Now specify the type one error rate, so our significance level. Now for this one, I'm gonna choose a point zero one. Again, just to show you some conceptual information, I'm gonna show you a different one or use a different one. Then we'll state the decision rule. So if our Z value is greater than 2.33, we will reject the null hypothesis. So this is our upper tailed test. Remember, with an alpha of 0 0.01, 
We have 99% there in the non-rejection region, and we have the 1% all in the upper rejection region. So our Z, our critical value, is 2.33, which is right there. And of course, where does that come from? That comes from our Z table. So you just have to look up that critical value in the Z table. Of course, step five will gather our data. Now we already did that. So our sample size again was 225 and our sample mean was 3.25. So let's go ahead and calculate our test statistic. So there are our four inputs, our sample mean, our hypothesized mean, our sigma and our sample size. And again, the same formula. So we'll go ahead and substitute all that information into our equation and we come up with a Z value, a Z test value of 2.5. So let's go ahead and put that on our curve. So here is our distribution and you can see that we have our non-rejection region in the middle. That's 99% or 0.99, that's our probability in the middle. And of course we have our 1% there on the ends. So remember, what we're saying here is that we expect 99% of our sample means to be in this blue region, and then 1% to be in the rejection region, in the uh, brown color there. So here our hypothesis, our null, is that mu is less than or equal to 3, and the alternative is that mu is greater than 3. So our cre Z critical value is 2.33, which is right there on our curve. Now our Z is... 2.5. So where is it at? It is in the rejection region. Now since the test statistic is inside the rejection region and beyond the critical value, we reject the null hypothesis that customer satisfaction is at or below average. So therefore, we have to reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis based on this Z value. Now, what is the mean customer satisfaction value at the critical value of 2.33? Because remember, up until now, we've been finding Z scores. But what is the actual customer sentiment, the average customer satisfaction at that critical value? Remember, this is the formula we used before. So it's everything we had in our equation before. Now, what we can do is we can just sort of put in the Z critical value we're looking at. So 2.33 just goes in where Z was. Now we're solving for X bar. So we want to find the sample that would fall right on, the sample mean that would fall right on that Z critical value. So again, this is just where our wonderful basic algebra that we learned many years ago comes into play. So we'll go ahead and solve our denominator. That ends up being 0.1. Then we'll multiply both sides by 0.1. So on the left-hand side, we have 0.233 equals X bar minus 3, which is just the leftover of our numerator. And we come up with a sample mean, X bar, of 3 0.233. So therefore, any sample of size 225 with a sample mean greater than 3.233 would lead to a rejection of the null hypothesis, assuming a constant sigma in the same alpha level. So if we went out again and we collected another sample, same 225 sample size, and let's say we got a mean of 3.19. What would happen then? Well, it's not greater than 3.233. Therefore, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. See how this works? So what we've done is we've set up sort of a threshold mean value or sample mean value. And anything above that assuming all this stays the same, would lead to a rejection of the null hypothesis. Anything equal to or below that would, make, would mean we fail to reject the null hypothesis.